What is going on YouTube? This is Benji and Sam's behind the camera. Capturing today's photo shoot, we're gonna be talking about different light modifiers and which one works for you. Today we're in the studio here and um, we're gonna try to keep it constant. We're gonna keep the camera fixed. We're gonna keep the light stand fixed. We're only gonna be changing the light modifier. Today we have the 8200, which is gonna be providing that light power today. So today we have our model Amanda. She's also a, a singer and she's coming out with some good stuff for you guys. So check out her Instagram on the description below and make sure to follow her. So let's get started. So here today we have the Sony a7 III which is the camera we're shooting and the Sony 85 f1.8 lens which is my lens of choice for portraiture for the compression um, and today we're going to be shooting tethered to my Mac which we'll get into that in a video coming up and how to set your Sony for tethering. But this is my preferred way of shooting portraits when in studio. So we're gonna get started with a 30 inch Octobox um, with a grid. And as you can see in my camera, we're gonna just keep it from the chest up to the top of her head. You're gonna see a little bit of the background and we just wanna see the fall off of the light and how soft it is. This is a double diffused Octobox. So we're gonna get started right now. So I've already exposed for the background. I turned off my trigger or I, I'll show you a different way of doing it. But um, if you take it, none of the exposure of the ambient light will affect the image. We'll turn our trigger on. And I've already set a custom button to do that same thing that I just did where it'll show you the uh, ex ambient exposure. But I'll show you how to set that up on another tutorial. Today we have our model and we're gonna set her up. I put a tape to indicate where she's gonna be standing. So we could get the most accurate reading out of every um, photo. We're gonna move this back just a little bit and I'm gonna take a test shot right now. <laughs> uh, we're gonna raise the... Okay, this man not scientific. All right, look at the camera. Uh, we're gonna move the Octobox just a little bit over just to we're gonna move it over just because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it always gotta be an explanation for things? It's just move it over. That's yeah. it. That's what you want. That's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna recompose here. Make sure she's in the same frame. One, two, three. All right, perfect. All right, so as you can see in the image right here, uh, there is a Rembrandt lighting. Um, there is a nice soft fall off onto that image. So we got our one image for that one light modifier. Let's go on to the next one. All right, so for the next modifier, we have the underdog. Now, not a lot of people talk about this product, but this is the Mag Bounce. Now with the Mag Bounce, it's very good for events where you need soft light, but you need it on the go. But I've never seen anybody use it in a studio, but today we're gonna test that out and we're gonna see how soft it is. Now, usually for events, you, if you have a ceiling, you're gonna wanna use the MagSphere, but this is good when the ceiling is too high and you need kind of that directional light. Now, I've used it in events before and it's a lifesaver. But today we're gonna use it in the studio. Let's give it a shot, let's see how it goes. One, two, three. All right, so now let's see the results. You'll see for yourself. This one, the light you're gonna notice is a little bit harsher around the shadows in the nose, and it's because it's a smaller source of light, all right? You're gonna have, when you have a big soft box, you're gonna notice the shadows are, and the fall off of the shadows is gonna be a lot smoother with a bigger light source than it is like this one. But it still looks nice, and it is the underdog, but I like the competition. Let's move on to the next light modifier. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna mess up your back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good try. That's what happens when you're a Dominican and try to do what you want. We're always creating new stuff. You don't know about that, man. You know? <laughs> Stick to your mango. I mean, my phone hey. got messed up already. Hey. All right, so for the next one that we're gonna try out is the Sony A7 III. Um, square softbox that you can find anywhere on Amazon or even eBay. Non-name branded, um, but it's super, super convenient because it's so portable that you can take it into your event photography or outside shoots 
and it's very, very soft as well. But how will it stack up against the other two in this studio shoe? Let's check it out. Three. I think that's perfect. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. Wow, I think this is the best one, dude, mm -hmm. of the three. All right, so after doing the shoot, um, we used the di different light modifiers. Uh, going from the most inconvenient or the um, not the conventional one that we use for a studio, but I wanna talk a little bit about the differences and maybe how it'll work for you in your scenario. So I do love the 38 inch Octobox um, and the feel. Yes, you can get a six foot Octobox and a bigger light source, but if you're in a small studio or if you're in a home studio, Maybe that's inconvenient or you don't have the space for it or to lug around something that big might not work for your shoe. Now, um, it's very convenient for what we're working with here today and the space that we're in here today. And I really love how the fall off of the 38 inch um, softbox was on the subject. And I believe it was the softest image. Now, the one that surprised me was the budget one of them all. 24 inch softbox had a nice shadow roll off and it was by far the most impressive one and honestly if you want to get started with photography that might be your starter kit and it will give you good results now yes i kind of figured that the magmon bounce was not going to fit this scenario but i wanted to give you kind of a, a comparison and what it would be good for now the mag bounce is good for run and gun if you have an on-camera flash and you want to just hook up the mad mod and have soft light on the go that is the best choice it is going to be softer than harsh um on camera flash hey guys editing benji here so i do understand that the 36 inch octobox did have a grid on it now the grid is going to limit the angle of that beam of light um hitting the subject so you'll notice that in that um picture of amanda there's a lot more or deeper shadows um, on the left side of her cheek, given the impression that it is not softer light, but it very much is indeed a better quality of light hitting her face and it, uh, because it's a bigger source. But the angle of beam doesn't allow the light to wrap around her face, kind of like the 24 inch Octobox, um, the 24 inch uh, softbox does. And so that was my mistake to uh, not take that off, but definitely for next time, I'll keep that in mind. Um, but let's continue with this comparison. Now, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Comment down below which one you thought was the softest, which one was the most pleasing to the eye, and, and let us know. We'd like to hear from you. So if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button so like that you get notifications on every video we, that we give out, uh, which is gonna be on a weekly basis, new tutorials, behind the scenes. We're gonna have a lot of content where we have couch discussions and it's gonna be good. So come along the ride, it's gonna be a good one. Until next time, we'll see you. I'm not doing the smack. <laughs> <laughs>